Hi guys, you're welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be taking you through triple integrals in spherical coordinates. I have a problem here for us to solve. It says evaluate the triple integral over the region A of the function 16z dv, where E is the upper half of the sphere, this. So, our region was defined in this portion. Okay? This was where our region was defined, and this was the function given. So, in order for us to evaluate this, we need to move into the hot spherical coordinates. Okay. So, sometimes they may not tell you that do it in spherical coordinates, but your region will tell you that you are in the hot spherical coordinates. Okay. Because assuming you have been given this integral, and instead of you big being given upper and lower limits, we are saying that our region is the upper half of the sphere, s squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1, right? So let's see how we solve this problem. In spherical coordinates, we need three parameters, rho, theta, and phi. In the spatial representation, I have my x, I have my y, and I have my z. Right, so oh, like that. So once you have something like this, when you say rho, rho is your spatial radius. So in every 3D diagram, we have a spatial radius, okay, that revolve around the Z to create thickness of our 3D image or our 3D object. When you project this on the XY plane, you are going to get an image with radius R. On the xy plane and this r makes an angle theta with what our s axis phi is the angle this spatial radius rho makes with the z axis so phi here so this is exactly what we have here so meaning for us to fully find this integral we need to get the limit for these three parameters generally if you have a Cartesian coordinate integral and you want to convert it to spherical coordinate integral, the formula is given as so you have integral e a function of x, y, z, dv. So this one is the Cartesian form, and this is going to be equal to integral from delta to gamma integral from alpha to beta then integral from let's say c to d of rho squared sine phi right then you're gonna have a function of rho sine phi of theta that will be for x then rho sine phi sine theta for y then finally rho cos phi then the rho the theta the phi so i should have responded this okay so now at this point all i'm trying to say is wherever you see your x you have to convert it from the cartesian to the spherical coordinate okay so that is what you're going to do here so watch closely as i take you through now let's look at the region carefully so that we can define our parameters here so our region is saying that where E is the upper half of the sphere, S squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. In the three-dimensional space, if I draw my X, my Z here, and my Y here, if you have the upper half of a sphere, you are going to get something like a semi-hemisphere, right? A hemisphere. Now, a hemisphere here, as you've seen, when I project it on the XY plane, it's going to have a circle as what our image down here, right? So that circle will surely have what radius, right? That radius will make an angle of the X axis theta, exactly. So right now, our goal is what will be the spatial radius? The spatial radius is simply from here to anywhere here, right? And the angle phi is this side. So the angle phi moved around to create what this hemisphere. They are seeing the upper half of this sphere. Okay, the upper half of this sphere. Now, in spherical coordinates, s squared plus y squared plus z squared 
is what we call rule squared okay so we're gonna represent everything here as what rule squared is equal to one therefore our rule be equal to what one already we've been told that our sphere is sort the upper half of a sphere so it's hemisphere therefore starting from zero and moving up so our row will have an interval row greater than or equal to zero but less than or equal to one the next thing to consider is our theta our theta is following the xy plane as a circle right you know a circle will have zero less than or equal to theta less than or equal to two pi as simple as that finally our phi so our phi for something can create remember that the maximum phi can go is 0 to pi okay 0 to pi so if the phi becomes 180 then obviously we're going to get a perfect sphere and that completes our spherical i mean model okay but once the sphere is a hemisphere it's going to only cut some part of it here so it's going to lie from pi towards pi on two that is to lie on the first quadrant and it will rotate about itself Okay, so it's going to be 90. Okay, so obviously, if I'm to draw this, I'm going to have um, so this is the correct representation. So if you want to draw a hemisphere, then obviously on your z axis, here's my z axis. Okay, my row of four here, this is my row, then this is my phi. So when I rotate this about the z axis, I'm going to get my hemisphere. So for that reason, our phi is simply going to be greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to pi. Once we get all these parameters set, the next thing to do is what? Simply evaluate our integral. So always remember, this is a constant you have to introduce. Rule squared sine phi, don't forget. It's part of what? The definition of what? dv. Then also, wherever you see x, you do the necessary conversion. Okay. Then make sure that you put rho, um, the limit for phi is always at the outermost towards integral. So I'll have 0 to pi on 2 at the outermost. The next one is 0 to 2 pi. The next one is 0 to 1. Then the function is 16z, okay? 16z. And z in the spherical coordinates is given as rho cos phi. Rho cos phi. Then you multiply this by your root squared sine phi, right? Root squared sine phi. Then you just introduce your the row, the theta, d the phi. So once I have this, I'm good to go, right? I'm good to go. So at this point, I'm going to integrate with respect to rho first. But before then, I have to simplify 0 to pi on 2, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1. Then I'll have what 16 half rho half rho squared that makes it what rho cube, right? So rho cube plus phi sine phi the rho the theta the phi. Okay, but once I have this expression here, once I have this expression, what am I looking out for? I'm looking out for simplification. So let me first integrate with respect to the row. That's the innermost word, integral, right? So I'm going to have my integral from 0 to pi on 2. Integral from 0 to 2 pi. Then here it becomes, when I integrate this with respect to row, I'm going to have row to the power 4 divided by 4. Is that not it? So I'll have row to the power 4 over 4. And it will multiply the 16. So let me multiply it and I'll have what? 4 here. Then I introduce my so yeah our limit will be 0 to 1 then we have our cos phi sin out phi d theta d phi so further simplification i'll have 0 to pi on 2 and integral from 0 to 2 pi when i put 1 inside i'll get what 4 right minus 0 is still 4 so i'm gonna have 4 cosine of phi sin out phi d theta d phi at this point i'm going to integrate with respect to theta okay so i'm going to have 0 to 2 pi then when i, intro, I integrate with respect to theta theta will appear so i have 4 cosine phi sine phi and i'll introduce theta from 0 to 2 pi then i have my d phi 
So at this point, I have integral 0 to 2 pi of here. If I put 2 pi inside my pi, wherever I see theta, I'll put 2 pi, okay? So when I put 2 pi, I'm going to have what? 8 pi multiplying cos phi times pi. When I put zero, everything will be zero, right? So pi. So this is my final thing. Now, whenever you see an integral having this as product, convert it to what sine two phi. And introducing sine two phi, you have to bring a, a factor of half, okay? Because it's a compound angle. So I'm gonna have my half integral zero to two pi, eight pi multiplying my half sine two phi d phi. Well, gradually we are getting to the end so here i'll get my four pi out reaching out for me and i'll have integral zero to two pi of sine two phi pi so once i have this or sine integral of sine two phi integral of sine two phi i'll also have what negative half outside again so negative half multiplying four pi then I'll have my this becomes cosine of what two phi from zero to two pi. So after simplifying this, we're getting four pi. Thank you for being with me in this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.